Good morning, Applied Physics students. So we're going to work through the Velocity Vectors class worksheet together. So you should have it in front of you. It, you might have printed it. You could do it on a sheet of paper. Um, you could do it on Kami as a PDF. It doesn't really matter to me, but you should have that worksheet in front of you. Um, again, this purpose of this is to make sure that every student in physics, Applied Physics, is on the same page. Um, mathematically so that you know how to do some of these problems. So to kind of review some things that you have hopefully learned in some math classes at some point, what a right angle is. A right angle means that you have a 90 degree angle and I want to talk about how we show this in a triangle. So here's my triangle. And remember, to show a right angle, we use this symbol here to indicate it's a right angle, which means that it's a 90 degree angle. Um, a right angle is called a right angle because of carpenters, and I'm wondering if you might have an idea why. The reason why is that it was considered the right angle for doors to work. and for the house to be solid. So it was used by carpenters when they were building homes. They discovered that you had to have the right angle for doors to work properly and for the house to be solid. So that's how it came to be known as a right angle, to be this 90 degree angle. So we want to talk about a right angle triangle. And so again, I'm going to draw my triangle again. And my right angle triangle, okay, um, has some legs, and the legs are the sides that are adjacent or touching that right angle. And then we have the hypotenuse, which is always across from the right angle. So this is our hypotenuse. And when we have a right angle triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, to use this theorem, you must um, have a right angle triangle, okay? So it has to be this special right angle triangle. So how does this all relate to a resultant? Well, again, our resultant is some sort of vector that typically looks like this. And it is the result of a vector, we'll call this vector number one, being added to vector number two. Right? We've talked about um, horizontal and vertical components of velocity. Okay, and we're going to be talking about this. Okay, so these are our two vectors that result in this resultant. Now, the vectors are always at right angles, right? So here's our right angle. So then, our resultant is our hypotenuse. So basically what I'm saying here is our vector 1 becomes my a side, um, my vector 2 becomes my b side, and my resultant becomes my hypotenuse, which is my c. So if I kind of come back over here, again, I can also label this as my a side, my B side, my C side, when we start to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. So this is a leg, this is a leg, and C refers to the hypotenuse. Oops, there's not an H in there.
okay? So how do we get that length of C? Well, it's going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. So that's how we get the length of that side C, our resultant. That does mean that you need to know what and where the square root is on the calculator you use. Um, on the calculator I'm using, which is a TI30X2S, which is an excellent little calculator that's about $15 if you're looking for one, okay? I have an X squared button, and above it, so this is my like little button, and above it, I have a little symbol that looks like this. Okay? This is the square root. It's usually what your square root button is going to look like. Now, on my calculator, to get that square root, I have to hit the second button, and it just says second on it, and then I'm going to hit the x squared, and I'll get my square root. So you do need to know on your calculator how to get the square root. Again, if this is something you're struggling with, um, hopefully when we're back face-to-face, -face, uh, you can show me your calculator and I can give you a hand. If you're a 100% virtual student, we could have a quick Google Meet, um, and you could show me what your calculator looks like, and I could give you some help with that. So I want to do a couple of the practice problems together. We're just going to do two of them. So we're going to do number five, which says calculate the speed of raindrops hitting your face when they fall vertically at 3 meters per second while you're running horizontally at 4 meters per second. So again, I like little pictures because it kind of helps me. So I've got a little person in there running, okay? And I have raindrops. So the person here is running vertically 4 meters per second, or sorry, horizontally. And the raindrops... Right, so my raindrops are falling vertically three meters per second. So we want to know the speed of those raindrops actually hitting your face. So this is where we want to make a right triangle. So again, we have one leg of our triangle, which is us running the four meters per second. The other leg of our triangle is the 3 meters per second that the rate is falling. Okay. And we might actually, let me think about this for just one second. We want to actually put these so they add like tail to tail, right? That's what we had in our notes was that... Um, we wanted to add these. The vectors are drawn at right angles, so that the result is a hypotenuse. But I showed them kind of tail to tail, so I'm going to kind of go like this for my raid. Okay, at 3 meters per second. I don't really need the word raid there. So my hypotenuse is right here, right? And here's my right angle. Okay, so this is my resultant. This is, okay, uh, the speed of the raindrops hitting my face. Okay, so to calculate this, right, I'm going to use my a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is an A, this is a B, this is a C. So C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So square root of A is 4 meters per second, and I need to square it. Add 3 meters per second, and I need to square it. 
okay? So, again, I'm going to kind of show this in steps, right? So 4 squared is 16 plus 3 squared is 9, which equals 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. So my answer is 5 meters per second, okay? okay? Which is how fast those raindrops are hitting my face. So my answer to this, okay, is this 5 meters per second. Again, I would like you, this is the kind of work I'd like to see for problems like this. The other one we're going to look at is number eight, which is Sneasley. Um, and Sneasley flies at a speed of 10 meters per second in still air. So he's a little bird. And if he flies into a 2 meter per second headwind, how fast will he be traveling relative to the ground? So I have my bird. And he flies 10 meters per second in still air. So I'm just going to draw him going this way. If he flies into a headwind, that means it's coming at him. Okay? So that means that my wind is like this. And it's 2 meters per second. So we want to know that relative to the ground here, like if there was somebody standing down here, okay, how fast would he be traveling relative to the ground? Well, these are parallel ones, so I don't have to do anything with a um, right triangle. But because they're in opposite directions and vectors have direction, if I call this way positive, then this way has to be negative. So I add those vectors together, so I have 10 meters per second plus a negative 2 meters per second, okay, which gives me 8 meters per second. And my answer is positive, so that means he's moving 8 meters per second in the way I have this drawn to the right. Okay. So that's letter A. Letter B. Relative to the ground below, how fast will he travel when he experiences a 2 meter per second tailwind? So he's still flying, and he's still flying his um, 10 meters per second that he can go. But a tailwind means it's coming at him from behind. So the wind is also blowing the same direction at 2 meters per second. Again, these are parallel, so I don't have to do a right triangle. So I'm just going to add them together. And if I have this direction as being my positive, then I just have 10 meters per second plus the 2 meters per second means that relative to a person standing here on the ground, okay, he's moving 12 meters per second to the right the way I have it dropped. All right, letter C. While flying at 10 meters per second, so again, we have our bird and he's flying 10 meters per second. Suppose that he encounters a crosswind, which kind of means that it's not from the front or the back, but it's like across his body. So my wind's kind of coming like this. And it's a 10 meter per second crosswind. What is his speed? Again, relative to the ground below. Okay, and now we're going to call this kind of north, south, west, and east to help us a little bit with direction when we do this. Now, these are not parallel, right? So this is where I have to use my Pythagorean theorem, okay, and my triangle, right triangle. So here's my first vector, 10 meters per second. Here's my second vector, 10 meters per second, right? 
This is my bird. This is my wind. So my resultant is right here. And that's what I'm asking for. Right? That's going to be his speed relative to the ground below is this resultant. This is a leg. This is a leg. This is my hypotenuse. So remember my hypotenuse is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So my square root of a, which is 10 meters per second squared, plus my b, which is also 10 meters per second squared, right? So that's the square root of 100 plus 100, which is the square root of 200. So I'm going to use my calculator because I don't know the square root of 200 off the top of my head. So I'm going to take the square root of 200 and I get 14.14 and it's going to be meters per second. Now, according to the way that I've drawn this, I would describe his direction as being north east. And that would depend a little bit on how you drew your picture. I would always look at your picture to decide whether you have your direction correct. So those are a couple examples. Those were the two examples I was going to do. Remember your homework for tomorrow is I'd like you to do questions two, three, and six. Okay, on a separate sheet of paper showing all your work similar to how I've shown my work for these examples. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.